Hey there, practice of the practice community. Are you ready to take your private practice to the next level? Then mark your calendars for September 16th through 19th, 2024, because Level Up Week is back and bigger than ever. Insert rocket emoji here. Join us for four days of live webinars, interactive panels, and exclusive resources tailored just for counselors, therapists, and private practice owners. Whether you're looking to fill your caseload, hire your first clinician, or scale your group practice, we've got you covered. This is your chance to level up while others give up. Don't miss out on this game-changing event. Register now at practiceofthepractice.com forward slash level up and get ready to transform your practice. Remember, September 16th through 19th, Level Up Week, your ticket to practice success. Register today and let's level up together. Practiceofthepractice.com forward slash level up. This is the Practice of the Practice podcast with Joe Sanok, session number 1076. I'm Joe Sanok, your host, and welcome to the Practice of the Practice podcast. I am so excited to help you build a thriving practice you absolutely love. Uh, Today, we're talking a little bit about leadership. And, you know, it's interesting. I, in some areas of my life, I am very meticulous. I I am very uh, clear on what I want. And in other areas, uh, I am not. I, I think when it comes to kind of business and ideas, I tend to be more of a let me be a visionary, let me come up with it. And then I need people that are saying, here's how we're going to do it. Um, And so I've learned that about myself. I've learned that I often need to like take a step back. I need to have people help me conceptualize things. And part of becoming the leader I want to be is empowering other people, teaching other people kind of what I want and, you know, having some checks and balances, all sorts of different things. But I definitely screwed that up over the years in a lot of different ways, which is why I'm so excited to have this conversation today with Lori Smith. Now, Lori is the CEO of a prominent executive coaching firm that specializes in healthcare. She's a certified coach through the International Coaching Federation and has more than 25 years of healthcare leadership experience. She coaches teams internationally in uncovering blind spots and leveraging strengths for success and leadership impact. Lori, welcome to the Practice the Practice podcast. Hi, Joe. Thank you for having me. I'm I'm happy to be here today. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Um, you know, next week we kick off Level Up Week, which is, you know, twice a year. We do 16 webinars in four days and have all this content. And one of the things that we so frequently talk about is, you know, going from solo into group, you know, you put on all these hats. You're 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 the accountant, you're the lawyer, you're the social media marketer. You you do it all to keep your costs and your risk down. And then you start to hire your first or second or third uh, clinician. You might hire an assistant, a billing coordinator. And the skills that it took to be successful in solo practice are very different than the leadership skills you need to run a team. And so let's just start with that type of person. They're you know going from solo into group. They're building that early team. Let's start with just traps. Like what, what are some of the things that you see people just screw up when they're at that phase of just starting to grow a small team? Yeah. Oh my gosh. Unfortunately, when you're starting to expand and grow, there are so many traps to fall into and they're pretty easy to land in. uh, Nonetheless, absolutely overwhelm is one of them. And time management, time can so easily get away with us. And at the end of the day, we sometimes end up filling our time with things that were probably not as high priority as some of the things we didn't get to because we didn't have time to stop and strategically strategically think about how are we how are we using our time how are we leveraging it and reflecting at the end of the day about what we accomplished and what we didn't and where we spent our time was it worth missing those things that we didn't get to Oftentimes that self-reflective time feels like downtime, non-productive time, but really flipping the way we view that and seeing as a, as one of the most productive times that we have will save so much time in the long run being proactive. Mm, yeah. 
And and what would you say goes into that? What goes into really like looking at your time management, thinking strategically, like um, like what other? Let's stick with traps. What other traps are there that, that people can fall into, and then we can get into what people can do about it. Yeah. Well, one of the the most common traps that I see is letting your calendar run you instead of you running your calendar. And we sort of fall into this victimhood, and I, and I have done this. I have to be very cognizant of this myself. But we use that calendar as kind of a roadmap and we put our head down and we just go from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, to the next, without really thinking, is this the best utilization of my time? And how do I leverage my subject matter experts and the team around me so that I can manage my time effectively? The hard part is that we are often feeling like we're triaging things off of our calendar that are important. And that's true. They are important. But it doesn't always need to be us that is doing each one of those things. In order for us to be the most effective, we have to have good, strong time management. I was coaching a a physician leader one time, and he made the statement that he feels people who cannot organize their, their calendar probably have an inability to manage a business, a division, an organization, whatever it might be. (laughs) And it was a little bit of a profound statement at first. I thought, wow, that's catching me off guard a little bit. And then he's right. If we can't manage our calendar, how can we manage something as complex as an entire business? Yeah. I I feel like that's one of the things that early on, when I really started putting everything into my calendar and viewing what I put in there as important as the clinical work that I was doing at the time. Um, That's when things really shifted because, you know, I wasn't making excuses. I wasn't looking at a list. I wasn't doing anything based on how my energy was for the day. It was, this is in my calendar. I set aside half an hour here to work on this and chose not to take a paying client to work on this thing. So I need to do it. I I need to show up for myself. And, um, And even just that mindset of saying, if I dink around for half an hour in my business, that's a half hour I could have left early and gone and been with my kids. So really, when I'm not effective with my calendar during the day, I'm actually stealing time from my family too. Um, are there any other mindsets like that that you find helpful in regards to how people think about time? Yeah, I think that you hit the nail on the head. Number one, energy is finite. We don't have this infinite bucket of energy. And so thinking about how we allocate that as a resource Your blocking time on the calendar is a great way to make it more face up and visible. The things that still have to be done that might sort of fall on the back burner or in the background and and allow other things to take up that time and space. But the other mindset trap that we we get into often is negative self-talk. I see a lot of that. And that negative self-talk, that's non-productive time, right? If you want to label anything non-productive time, it's negative self-talk. It's not getting you anywhere. And it sort of gets you into this funk of maybe I'm not worthy. I'm not capable. I can't do this. Well, you can. That overwhelm sort of comes up insidiously sometimes. And having that heads up time to think about what is your strategy moving forward and reflect on, did I use my time wisely, is part of managing that overwhelm and helping to mitigate some of that negative self-talk. Meditation is a great way to look at that. You you think sometimes that meditation feels like non-productive time. It actually can be incredibly productive time. There are some great studies out there using functional MRIs that show even five minutes of meditation before going into something that is a heavy, uh, complex issue or topic can really help you to have better outcomes and be better critical thinker, better problem solver, better collaborator in many senses than if you're just running from one thing to the next, to the next, to the next. Mm -hmm. Now, let's talk about those early stage group practice owners. They start to build a team. Um, What are some leadership skills or actions or mindsets that you'd say are essential with those early teams? So we're talking three clinicians, maybe, you know, an assistant, maybe a part-time biller, um, you know, a small team. Like, what do they need to be doing, thinking, um, and and kind of like, yeah, like where should they be spending their time? Yeah. 
I love working with teams, large and small. And there are four pillars that I think are really incredibly important to sort of simplify and think about as you're building a team. I call it the STAR model. Um, it's S is self-transformation, T is team transformation, A is adaptability, and the R is results. And in that order intentionally, right? If we don't understand ourselves and do that inner work, that, that inner game runs our outer game, then we don't understand the impact that we're having on others. How do our thoughts and feelings impact ourselves and impact others? And what do we do about that? And then thinking about the team, really establishing that foundation of trust, because that is the secret ingredient to so many pieces coming together and being successful for a business. Part of that trust is creating psychological safety. And part of psychological safety is the ability to embrace healthy dissent, right? We shouldn't all be having the exact same view. I oftentimes tell my teams, if I look around and I've got a room full of bobbleheads agreeing with me, I 100% know I'm not the smartest person in this room. We're missing something. And we're so much more strong if we have these differing views, perspectives, thoughts, and we leverage that, that knowledge resource collectively. And then with adaptability, especially in anything healthcare, change is a constant. And sometimes change leadership is project oriented. It feels like there's a start and a finish. And with adaptability, it's how do we navigate those challenges that come our way that weren't expected and oftentimes weren't welcomed, right? COVID is such a great example of changes that we had to make on the fly and very quickly and be adaptable to. We didn't want it. We didn't welcome it. Certainly wouldn't have chosen it, but we had to adapt to it and figure it out. And then results. As we're building that team, gaining that trust, having good, strong self-awareness and understand change leadership and adaptability, how do we pull all of those skill sets together to get the results that we're looking for? And part of that is creating shared vision and purpose. I see a distinct difference between groups who have a shared vision and purpose and those that don't. It's the visual between a collegiate rowing team smoothly cruising through the water at a great speed versus bumper boats at the state fair where everybody's kind of bumping into each other. Are we on the same page moving toward the same North Star? So those would be four key areas I would focus on as I'm building a team. Mm. Now, as you're, uh, as you're continuing to build after that, you know, people, you know, start to fill up their clinicians. They're, you know, usually kind of what you start when you have three or so people works to, we've seen anywhere from seven to 10 clinicians. And then after that, people start having to think about clinical directors, you know, more kind of layers of supervision, oversight, that the owner really can't do it all, nor should they. So when they're really looking at scaling, you know, above 10 up to you know, 50 or so, what are those leadership skills people need to be employing? Yeah, it, I loved what you said at the beginning when you said you are visionary and you know that the operational logistics and minutia sometimes are not your strong point. That's the first thing is to have that self-awareness for you. Who do you need to surround yourself with that can fill in the gaps that you have? Because we all have them. And when you have a small team, as a person comes or goes from your team, that's a great time to reevaluate the skill sets that each member of the team has and where are your gaps as a skill set. Um, even something as simple as strengths finders. You can do those assessments online very quickly and easily, map out where each one of your team members falls in there and pretty clearly see where the gaps are and look for someone that can fill in those white spaces that the rest of the team doesn't have. When you've got a small team, those job descriptions may shift and change depending on the growth and development of those that have been on the team for a while and those that you need to find with those skill sets that we need to level up a little bit. So it's got to be fluid as you're looking at who to bring on depending on who's coming and going. Mm. So 
Something always comes up when you're running a private practice. Well, Gusto's payroll and HR services can make it a little easier. Gusto was designed for you, the small business owner. They take the pain out of running a business, automatically calculating paychecks, filing payroll taxes, setting up open enrollment. Gusto does it all. Want more? Time tracking, health insurance, 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, access to HR experts, you get the idea. With Gusto, you can focus on the joy of running your business. It's super easy to set up and get started. And if you're moving from another provider, Gusto can transfer all the data for you. It's no surprise 99% of businesses said the value they get for Gusto is worth the price. And here's the best part. Because you're a listener, you get three months totally free. All you have to do is go to gusto.com forward slash Joe. Again, that's gusto.com forward slash Joe. I'm telling you, you're going to love Gusto. Get started today. You know, as people are coming and going, like if we were to think about kind of the big buckets of of running a growing practice, um, the ones I think of, and you can kind of add or subtract or kind of add some nuance to this, it's usually, you know, the HR kind of side, like who's who's hiring, who's paying attention to that? Is that the owner? Is it an intake coordinator? Is it someone like that? We've got kind of the intake flow of clients and the client management. We might call that kind of customer service. Um, we've got the money side of it. So bookkeepers, um, you know, attorneys looking at liability, um, accountants, um, just the the billing that happens to make sure people are up to speed. Uh, and then probably like the marketing side of things. So the website, um, all of those ways that people find out that you exist. Um what would you add to those different areas? I guess I'd also add a fifth category, which would be like the clinical side. So making sure that people are doing good work, that they're finishing their progress notes, that um, if they don't know what to do with a client, they have a supervisor that they can go to. So I just listed kind of five big clinical areas. Um, what would you say in regards to thinking leadership wise as as the owner that's maybe not doing all the operations, they may not even be doing clinical work anymore. Um, like what at that level, when they're looking at kind of those five different areas, should they be thinking about? Yeah, that's a great question. And if you've seen one organizational chart or one business group chart, you've seen one because they're all vastly different. And it depends on the needs of the team and the the purpose and vision of that team. One piece that I see missing frequently, and this could fall under your HR bucket, is continuous development for your team whether that's personal, professional development, leadership development, team development, whatever that might be, particularly as we're beginning to see so many more generations cross-collaborating, newer generations place a high value on organizations investing in their continued development. It's really important for them. And as we continue to grow, we don't want to stay stagnant. We want to be able to continue to have that growth mindset, a positive mindset, understand how to overcome future challenges and current hardships and what that looks like. It's easy to cut some of those things from a budget um, because they're not necessarily um, that baseline foundation operational necessity. But when you're thinking about teams that are outperforming others, they are focusing on those areas. Mm, yeah. Now, when you th- like for me, I-, I love the the model from lean manufacturing of plan, do, check, adjust, uh, where, you know, you're, you're planning what you're doing. Uh, you're going to try it, uh, you're going to check it, and then you're going to make adjustments over time. And I love the assumption that it's not going to be perfect and you're going to have to have monitoring. You're going to have to have iterations of it. Um, When you think about the ongoing nature of leadership, um, what maybe habits um, or rhythms would you say good leaders have that they're doing, whether it's daily, weekly, monthly, annually, Um, Like, what do some of those rhythms look like when you see top leaders that are just killing it? From the standpoint of their own development or their team or with regard to change? I would say, you know, wanting to grow their business, but then also I never want to have people growing their business at the expense of their own health, their family, their joy, that it should be adding to their life. It shouldn't be subtracting. And so um, that whole just like hustle culture thing, I like I and most of my listeners don't buy into. And I, I'm you 
you don't seem to either. So, so I would say probably some personal development in there, but like, you know, when, when you see people that are successfully running their business, um, they can navigate challenges. We're not going to just have a business that never has challenges. If, if we don't have challenges, we probably aren't pushing hard enough. Um, but what are those top leaders doing regularly that helps them stay educated, helps them stay grounded, helps them inspire their teams, know what's going on, just like being a good leader? Yeah, that is incredibly important. We know that when we're not taking great care of ourselves, we are not optimal collaborators, problem solvers, and critical thinkers. There's great data out there to support that. Seeing what some of the strongest leaders are doing, it's more of a work-life integration. We used to talk about work-life balance, which is nearly impossible in many ways, that 50-50 balance. But if we think about work-life integration or work-life harmony, sometimes we may be putting more energy and time into work, but then how are we offsetting that down the road where it's more time and energy on family or whatever it is that's meaningful and a little less time on work? There are seasons of developing businesses that you're pedal to the metal a little bit. And then how do you offset some of that time? Even during the week, think about it as smaller increments or chunks, or even during the day, seeing how your brain is functioning when you are just going nonstop versus taking even 5, 10, 15 minutes of a break makes an incredibly huge impact. Mindset is such a powerful tool for a leader to have and so often underestimated with leaders. One of the biggest shifts I see with clients that I coach is around mindset. And as you're doing that hustle, you know, as you talked about, I don't ascribe to that either. This whole notion of multitasking has been really greatly debunked. We're not doing great work when we're multitasking or we're running on an empty cup. We've got to be taking great care of ourselves and mindset is a part of that. Meditation has been shown to really help improve areas, especially in emotional regulation. I saw a study that was really pretty fascinating where long-term practitioners of meditation actually had structural differences on their MRIs, particularly in areas of the brain that involve emotional regulation. So we're starting to tie some of these things that theoretically we thought were true with some physical science and data to back that up. Meditation is a tough one. <laughs> and, you know, I have been doing it for years and I was terrible at it when I first started. My mind was wandering all the time. Still, sometimes it does, but that's part of that being forgiving of yourself and making it a practice. You can do a meditation in sometimes less than five minutes. There are very quick ones out there. But that would be um, a couple of the key areas I would say to focus on as you're looking at how to be the most effective leader. Time management, mindset, work-life integration. Mm, yeah, no, I, I'm with you. That whole idea of slowing down um, and allowing our brains to have the best ideas. Uh, you know, our, our best ideas seem to come when we're taking a shower, we're going for a walk, we're on a long drive, and maybe we just have music we like playing. And it's one of those things that um, that I think that as we slow down, then it becomes clear the best use of our time instead of using our time with everything. Um, so I'm, I'm with you on that. Uh, the last question I always ask is, if every private practitioner in the world were listening right now, what would you want them to know? I would want them to know that they're not alone. Um, oftentimes when I'm coaching clients, they feel like they're the only ones that are dealing with a certain situation or feeling like they're not worthy. They're not capable, really understanding that you are worthy. You are capable. You got where you are because you are incredible in your skill set and leaning on the team around you as you move forward. You don't have to do this by yourself. Mm, so good. If people want to follow your work, if they want to connect with you, where should we send them? Uh, they should head over to my website, which is www.laurieleadership.com, L-A-U-R-I-E-L-E-E-L-E-A-D-E-R-S-H-I-P. And they can also find me on LinkedIn. 
Mm. So awesome. Well, thank you so much for being on the Practice of the Practice podcast. Thank you for having me, Joe. I appreciate it. Yeah, when it comes to leadership, I think just starting with that baseline of, you know, where are we at? What, what's going on? What's, what's happening here? The, the more that we can just pay attention to our joy uh, and how that's impacting the team, I mean, that's such a great starting point. Just today, I was doing a, a free consulting session with um, one of our Next Level Practice members that won it through a, a competition that we did. And they were working on their niche. They're like early on in their practice. But this person, um, she was an attorney before she became a therapist and um, was thinking, you know, I, I know the attorney world. Do I want to focus on kind of burned out attorneys that maybe are drinking too much or having marriage issues? And as we talked about it, it was, it was low hanging fruit that she could develop a practice like that. But it, there was something that was like, do you want to do that? Is that the population? Like you left law. And so just that idea of we get to create the business that we want to create. We get to create the systems. We get to decide who we want to work with, where we get extra training, all of those things. And so I hope that you are thoughtful in regards to just what you're creating and how you're thinking through it. We've had some amazing podcasts in the last few days. So if you missed any of them today, yeah, we talked about being a better leader. Um, yesterday, we talked about how to raise your rates really high. Um, before that, we talked about having better IT and systems and using AI. Um, before that, we talked about being less distracted. And before that, we talked about, are you burning out? So a number of things that are kind of around leadership. And um, this this is just part of that series. Uh, we're doing this show almost daily and uh, we love it. So um, make sure you sign up also for Level Up Week. That is right around the corner. That kicks off on Monday over at practicethepractice.com forward slash level up. You can see all of our speakers. Also on Monday, our membership community is all open back up. So another cohort of Next Level Practice, if you're in solo practice, if you are starting a group practice, you can join the next cohort for group practice launch. And Group Practice Boss, another cohort of bosses coming in together. So we are so excited to have these membership communities all uh, serving you. So sign up for that. Also, we couldn't do this show without our amazing sponsors. And Gusto is our sponsor today. It's who we use um, for payroll, HR. It just makes it all easier. I mean, whether it's paychecks, payroll taxes, setting up enrollment, man, Gusto does it all. Uh, they also help with doing health insurance, 401k, onboarding, commuter benefits, offer letters, all those sorts of things. It's no surprise that 99% of businesses say the value that they get for Gusto is totally worth the price and we're one of those. Um, head on over to gusto.com forward slash Joe. Again, that's gusto.com forward slash Joe. Uh, it's going to be a great decision to just streamline all of that financial side of your business. Thank you so much for letting me into your ears and into your brain. Have an amazing day. I'll talk to you soon. Special thanks to the band Silence is Sexy for that intro music. And this podcast is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information in regard to the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the host, the producers, the publishers, or guests are rendering legal, accounting, clinical, or other professional information. If you want a professional, you should find one. <laughs>